Spirituality and my spirit to Alan T. Hey, y'all. 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 Hey, y'all.
Uh, or to help me when my help comes from the hills. Two, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Three, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Four, behold, he hath keepeth Israel, shall neither slumber nor sleep. Now, there's a verse in Romans that says, The Lord has put a spirit of slumber on you. That you have not eyes to see or ears to hear. Is this the case? Or did mankind come behind God and said that his people saw that his people should neither, neither slumber nor sleep? And then they put us into slavery, comatose and everybody, trying to knock us out in the spirit. It is what it is. We that's why we have to study. That's why we have to collectively study so we can come up with these answers. And for those who have the answers, you guys have to begin to listen to us, right? Five, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. And I told you, shade upon the right hand. We we sipping all the tea we can with no shade. Simple hatred and demonic evil against no man if you stand with the son of righteousness the shade can't touch you that's why i've been trying to tell you people this i got a bible verse psalms 121 the lord is thy keeper in verse 5 the lord is thy keeper the lord is thy shade not that simple hatred but it will protect you from the central hate the simple hatred it will protect you from evil people Upon thy right hand. Who sits at the right hand of the Most High God? Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah. Absolutely, the Word of God. Six, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the, the moon by night. It's real, people. Seven, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, and he shall preserve thy soul. Amazing, right? Also, 8 goes on to say, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Guys, I just got a blessing. My mechanic been my mechanic for 20 some odd years. Know my situation. I told him about the boot. I told him my brakes went the day I paid to get the boot off. My car sat up since last Wednesday. He came through to fix it yesterday. Then a situation happened with my grandson being let off the bus without his mom being present. She was running late, got to the bus. They let him off. He walked home, but we didn't know. So it was an Amber Alert scare for our family yesterday. My firstborn grand grandson. And, 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 and the mechanic knew my situation. He came with the break line holes and he told me all I had to do was go walk to the local store get the brake fluid and he fixed my car for me so the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in y'all alright so Psalms 122 9 verses I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when I heard that call. I wasn't raised by pastors and preachers. My grandfather was a 33rd degree Mason, 3rd degree Mason. My mom didn't go to church. My mother's grandmother started the church, the first church in 1800s. And uh, not too far from where I live. So the spirituality was there, but we didn't have church growing up. Thank God you hear the voice of God. God said his sheep will know his voice. And I, I'm glad I heard it. And I'm glad I answered that call, you know. That's one call I'm glad I did not ignore or reject or block. <laughs> so it goes on to say... Two, our feet shall stand within the gates, thy gates of Jerusalem. Three, Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Four, whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. 
Now, I'm going to stop right here. I know my head is down and I'm not projecting my voice. I'm going to somehow get it on the system. But I love reading from the Bible. Maybe I'll find a way to prop it up alongside the camera so I'm looking at both, you know, duality. But this looking down, it throws me off sometimes, people. That's why I just stay behind the, the screen and read sometimes. So I'm still navigating and, you know, networking within myself how to read, how to stay looking at you, and read the Word of God at the same time. Anyway, four. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Five. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. And we went over some of them thrones, right? Six, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Seven, peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. We all want that peace and prosperity. Those are the two P's you could bestow upon me. Eight, for my brethren and companion sakes, I will now say peace be within thee. Peace be within you guys. Peace be within you. Peace be within you. Peace be within you. Verse 9. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. That in Psalms 122. We're going right into Psalms 123. And we have four verses to go. Unto thee lift up my eyes, O thou that dwelleth in the heavens. Two, behold, as the eyes of the servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, until that he have mercy upon us. Guys, if you haven't already, go ahead over to Religion Link TV. Give me your subscription today. It's free. It does not cost a thing. And while you're at it, you can also go over to teespring.com, pick you up some merch. Um, it's plain. It's simple. But over here on this channel, we call ourselves Winksters because we are lace. That's L-A-Y-S-E. Looking at you side eye is the acronym for looking at you side eye. We lace, all right? So with that being said, guys, I hope and pray that you guys can go over and get you a coffee mug. They come in black, the lemon color, gold. They come in white. The t-shirts and the hoodies, I believe, come in white and black. But nonetheless, we appreciate your support no matter how you give it to us. Thank you. So, uh, let's go on. Verse Let's start 123 over again. Unto thee lift up my eyes, O thou that dwelleth in the heavens. Two, behold, as the eyes of the servants look unto the hands of their masters, and as the eyes of the maiden unto the hands of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon thee, Lord, our God, until that he have mercy upon us. Three, have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt of the proud. Contempt of the proud. See, we talked about the proud earlier, guys. I do apologize. I'm letting some of this breeze come in. <laughs> I don't have the air on. Mm -mm, trying to keep my light bill down. For our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Something with the contentment of the proud. Verse chapter 124. Alright guys, here we go. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, Two, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. Three, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. 
For then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. 5. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. 6. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as prey to their teeth so they can eat us up, so they can devour us, right? 7. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped, people. I said we are escaped, people. <laughs> In the last verse of 124, our help, verse 8, our help is in thy name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's the only true help that's going to come from anywhere is from God. We're going right into 125. All right, and it's five verses. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. 2. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forevermore. 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. See. If you put your hand to iniquity, then you share the same inheritance as the heathen, as the wicked. For do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. God knows your heart. I don't care how bad you try to be out here and be good. He knows your heart. I don't care how much giving and doing. He knows even why you do that. For some clicks and views and things like that. God knows why people around these YouTube streets doing and saying what they are doing, but He knows the motive behind your heart. Five, as for as such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. And there's and there's some people out here very peaceful, you all. Even through the midst of slavery and fighting for reparation and everything else, there's some peaceful people out here, and I'm one of them. But that ends the verse, chapter 125, moving right into 126. Alright, so, a song of degrees. Verse 1, Psalms 126, and it's just referenced as a song of degree, a song of degrees. When the Lord turned again to capti the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. Mm -hmm. 3. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad, whereof we are glad. For turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Call me a crybaby if you want. If I sow tears, I'm going to reap joy. A lot of people say you weak if you cry and wonder why they have no real joy. And they want every sexual perversion, every wicked evil thing to come along and fill them up because they're not truly happy. They're not rejoicing in the Lord. They're rejoicing in cash apps and PayPals and clicks and views and uh, popularity, fame and fortune. But no real joy. Six, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. There's a song we sung growing up, going to vocational Bible study. And, you know, even though we didn't grow up in church, my mom would allow us to get on the yellow bus and ride to the vocation school. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. 
da na 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 bringing in the sheets. I got all my songs written down and things like that, but there's a little kid's song out called Bringing in the Sheaves. And when we used to teach uh, Sunday school, these are some of the songs we used to sing with the children and stuff. My daughter and I used to be over Sunday's children's church, not Sunday school, children's church. I misspoke. But we have, a, we had an itinerary. We found songs. We wrote songs. We made up songs. But um, there's a song called Bringing in the Sheaves. So that ends Psalms 126 going right into 127. Alright, so one, except the Lord build the house, the labor they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. So except the Lord build your house, build up your temple, build up your lifestyle, build up your career, build up your wisdom, build up your your giving and your love. It's in vain. It's in vain, people. I don't care how established you look in this world. If you got there without God, it's vanity. Because apart from God, people are trying to be happy. And that's the true vain vanity that goes on in this world. Two, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sheep. So he's saying, it's vain for you to rise up early and go to bed late. <laughs> Three, lo, children are an inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. The fruit of the womb, the seed, the replenishing, multiplying, and being fruitful is what God is talking about here, people. For as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of thy youth. And what you want to do on YouTube is abuse the children. I ain't with that, y'all. We are all God's children. And I see how we have all been abused at some point. And those generational curses you guys talk about is what causes you to keep abusing people on YouTube. Five. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in thy gates. I speak with enemies. I mean, we have to. You know who they are, but the Bible says, Be not ignorant of their devices, or the Satan and the enemies of this world will gain advantage on you. So, that ends Psalms 127, moving right along to 128. All right, guys, here we go. Verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. We all out here eating the fruit and the labors of our hands, right? Some good, some bad. Some sustain us, and some is killing us. But you are definitely eating the fruit and the labor of your hand. You reap what you sow. Don't forget that, people. Three, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. We want this for our children, but we picking them off. Exploitation, missing, molestation, verbal abuse. Not pushing them to their capacity. Not teaching them the word of God. Just letting them live lawless. It's killing our babes. For behold that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. Just fear God. Don't be afraid of him. But just like your parents said, you better not steal my car, X, Y, Z. You better not. This doesn't go down in my house. And you find a way to... To, to follow your parents for the most part we honor our mother and our fathers why can't we honor their creation their creation and the ones that created them who is God right so it goes on to say five the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life that's all I want to see I'm going to see some evil I'm going to see some wicked people 
But in my life, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Psalms 23, the last verse. Go back there and read it. So, 6. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children in peace upon Israel. I'm a grandmother. I see my children's children. The Bible tells you, the Proverbs 17, 6. The children's children is the reward of the age. To see your grandchildren is a blessing. And mine's almost came up missing, y'all, yesterday. And I said in that video this morning, don't lie, be on time, and do not release these children without supervision from one hand to the other. Yes, children get to a point where they can be left unattended, but not at seven years old. Thank God, seven is the number of God's completion. And what the doctors and my daughter were trying to say about my son, my grandson, being a little ADHD, trying to put him on medication, I'm praying, I'm supplicating for my grandson. And he proved to me yesterday that he's not dumb or illiterate like these people want to push him off to be. He walked four blocks and one down across two busy highways to get home when his mother was running late to pick him up. And when the bus driver let him off with his mom not being present. You understand what I'm saying? We got to take better care of our children. That ends Psalms 128 going right into 129. Alright guys, check this out. Eight verses. Verse 1. Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, many a times they afflicted us from our youth. When we, when we were still babies being developed as the children of Israel. Being taught how to live as the children of Israel. People persecuted us. And you're still persecuting God's children today. Two, many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against us. See, this affliction of being in America under the hands of the oppressor for over 430 some odd years now. It says it right here. It will not prevail against us. Three, the plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. And that's a prime example of slavery here in America. For the Lord is righteous. He hath cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Oh yeah. They gonna reap what they sow. Oh yeah, they can't escape it. Five, let them all be confounded and turn back that hate Zion. And they are. God has. We keep allowing them back in. We keep, we're, we're afraid to be as equal. We're so used to people being over us. It's almost as if, if God took everybody else out the land, will we be able to rule? Will we be able to reign? I don't know because a lot of you've been taught by the oppressor to keep your own kind oppressed. So I don't know, black people. We have a lot of healing to still do in this land. So, uh, six, let them be as the grass upon the housetops, which withereth afore it groweth up. Seven, wherewith the mower filleth not his hand, nor he that bindeth sheaves his, his bosom. Meaning, bosom is translated out here, arms full, okay? Eight, neither do they which go by say... The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. What happened to these greetings? What happened to us blessing people with the word of God? With the greeting of God? Bless you in the name of God. I greet you. What happened to this? The blessing of the Lord be upon you. What happened to may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May his countenance be on you and his shalom peace be in you. What happened to that prayer and that greeting that we used to pray over our children as our ancestors did and taught that down to us? See, that's another generational curse that's going on in the world. People don't want to obey God and do customarily and traditionally what was taught in this Bible. 
the world has made it so easy for you to do everything else outside of this Bible but live for God. So we are going right into verse third, 130, chapter 130. All right, guys. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Eight verses. Okay. We're going to get this read done. Another one in the books, right? Episode 136 is complete after two more chapters with 11 verses to go between the two. Psalms 130. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord, too. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ear be attentive to the voice of my supplication. God is not going to pay attention to nobody else's voice but yours for your own problems, for your own needs. People can pray for you. It strengthens us. But God is waiting to hear from you people. Three, if thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Because of the generational curses, we all will die, drop dead right now. For the iniquities of our ancestors and for our descendants and people of today. We all, we be gone, y'all. Listen to what the psalmist is having this conversation with God about. For, but there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. It, only if you choose to. Five. He's worthy to be feared only if you choose to fear God like you would fear a mother and father if you broke their rules, right? Five, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Waiting for the Lord and waiting on Jesus to come back is two totally separate things here, people. Six, my soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. See, people watch for the morning because they want to make sure they wake the hell up the night before. There's a lot of people watching for the morning to make sure they're still living. And he said twice, even as they that watch for the morning, it says his soul. So as many as you hope to wake up tomorrow morning and watch for the morning, my soul does wait for the Lord in measurable numbers, okay? So seven, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy and with him is plenteous redemption. We want to be redeemed from this situation. And God is the only one who can truly, 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 truly redeem us, people. God is the only one. Verse 8. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. See, Israel is Jacob. Jacob's sons is the 12 children of Israel. They've been living in iniquity, generational curses, and disobedience forever. Forever. That ends chapter 130, going right into Psalms 131. And it goes like this. Verse 1. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved, verse 2, and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. I be trying to sing these, y'all. My soul is even as a weaned child. A weaned child is free not to suck on a mother's breast. A weaned child is free to eat of themselves. A weaned child is free to be self-sufficient. Verse 3. Let Israel hope in the Lord for henceforth and for 
ever. That's it. Another one down in the books, y'all. Let's get the music playing. Hopefully. Guys, you've been watching Religion Wing TV. I'm your host, Spirituality, and my spiritual ear stay. Yes. Sound of the morning read. 136 is down in the books, you all. I will be back with another one briefly. Hopefully, we can get done with the sounds today. We have to go to 150. So I think we have like two or three of these reads and psalms and then we'll be done with that book. We'll go right into Proverbs and get caught up, guys, all right? Again, let the word of God be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathways, right? Wherever you step, it will be bright. And wherever his Holy Spirit leads you, you begin to shine this kind of light, his light, this glowing light, this beauty for ashes light. <laughs> With that being said, you all, shalom, God bless you, and have a great day. I will see you on the next upload, live, and or premiere. Thank you so much for having me, God, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit. Take that with you today. Shalom. Spiritual ears say Shalom